Last time on Dude, you haven't played this game! Pizza Man! Hmm. That's weird. I didn't order any pizza. Well, come on in anyways. No! Dracula! Pepperoni with a side of Castlevania judgment, anyone? You! How did you find me? Dracula knows all. I searched on GeoCities for your show. Turns out you're quite the up-and-comer on the YouTubes. Oh, uh... Thanks, Dracula? I guess? You thought I was serious? You're dumber than your show. Hey, I resent that. So, what do you want? What are you doing here? You want more of my blood? Well, you can't have it. I won't let you. Actually, if you couldn't tell from the empty pizza box... What happened to the pizza? I threw it on the ground. And while the pizza boy was picking up the shattered remains, I had a snack. Turns out blood red is the best sauce. All right, please get to the point, Lord of Sarcasm. You're going to review the spectacularly dreadful and always shunned upon Castlevania Judgment for my entertainment. I will feast in the glory that is Mike Tendo's brain going mad from the sheer spectacle of horror. This game will bestow upon your gimme. Castlevania Judgment. It's a title that garners the most mixed reactions from the Castlevania fanbase regarding any entry in the entire series. Yeah, even Castlevania 2 Simon's Quest doesn't get this much hate. It's a unique idea that tries its best to sit in the halls of fame next to titles like Power Stone and Super Smash Bros. And although it has its fair share of problems, Judgment doesn't deserve all the hate that is spewed upon its ugly soul. So come along and join us on this supposed horror show this is Castlevania Judgment. Did I just hear the game say its own name? What? Resident Evil does it all the time. Yeah, but in Resident Evil it's like... Resident Evil. Wow. Holy water, that's impressive. Thanks. I do birthday parties, weddings, and bar mitzvahs. 
During production of the highly underrated Nintendo DS masterpiece, Castlevania Order of Ecclesia, Konami and Castlevania's then longtime producer, Koji Igarashi, were at a crossroads. How can they craft a new Castlevania title for the Nintendo Wii, a revolutionary new motion controller based console that strayed far from the norm? Igarashi, also known affectionately to his fans as Iga, stated in many interviews that he felt that gamers wouldn't want to control the legendary Belmont Whip with motion controls, as the gimmick would potentially become overbearing and tiresome. Then, for whatever reason, they decided to use that very idea in a game that came out years later, called Castlevania The Arcade, where you literally whip enemies with a giant plastic rod that simulates a whip in the game. Wait, why didn't we see this come out on the Wii again? Instead, Konami went in a different direction with Castlevania Judgment. Hailed as an action fighting game, it tries to make all camps of the clan of Vania happy. There's a boatload of fan service. I am the morning sun. Come to vanquish this horrible night. Great musical remixes of some of the series' best works, tons of fun unlockables, and fairly competent online play. And gamers were still not satisfied with this entry. The game sold just over 9,000 units in its Japanese homeland within the first year's launch, and by the end of the Wii's life cycle, it moved just over 100,000 copies in North America. So it's clear fans of the series were not digging the game, possibly due to mostly poor reviews. Everybody's got an opinion, right? Meh. What do you mean, meh? If I don't like someone's opinion, I just rip their throat out. Present company excluded. <laughs> right, old buddy, old pal? We'll see. The creators brought on Takeshi Obata, manga artist and creator of the series Death Note, to try to breathe new life into the series with an all-new reimagined character design that strayed from what previous artist Ayami Kojima had worked to create. The problem is that his direction strayed too far away from the series we all knew and loved and felt more like what Death Note fans would be used to enjoying. Fans reacted negatively to the redesign, and there was much talk of how different everyone looked. From Dracula's overloaded golden god suit to Simon's shirtless jacket and shorts, the clothes weren't the only things to change drastically. Some characters' designs were for the better, such as Cornell the werewolf, but giving Trevor an eye patch, Making Eric Lacard look like a preppy middle schooler? What was going on with the art style here? You can unlock Shinoa by linking the two games wirelessly, and while they've taken some liberties with adjusting her character to fit into this world, I always felt that she was more stiff and unpersonable in judgment than she was in the DS game, which is strange considering they were developed around the same time. You'd have thought they'd keep the characters acting similar, but hey, the character changes are pretty outrageous here. But seriously, what's up with Dracula's outfit? He looks like he's wearing a giant shellfish costume. <laughs> Ridiculous. Did Alucard get a nose job? Talk about taking artistic liberties. While most efforts were failed in the art department, some were... Um... Boobalicious? Come. Let's play! I will give you the greatest of pleasures. Ah, so satisfying. And now... You die! I'd like to crank her tank. And ghost her goblins. Wait, what? Yes, that's Carmilla, the character we discussed during the previous episode. And man, has she changed in this game. Though she's usually remained hidden behind a mask or a giant floating skull and other iterations of the series, none have been this overtly sexual and open. Beauty and strength, dear. In fact, Saifa Belnades from Castlevania 3, Dracula's Curse, is also been given a sexy bump er bumps. And Maria Renard, well how, how can you say that? Those are a sacred gift! Uh-huh. They're huge. Why hello, sweetie pie. You'll make a nice little appetizer. what I'm talking about. Well, no, I mean, yeah, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not a diddler or anything. It's, you know, I'm hundreds of years old, so everybody, you know, that boy's like splitting hairs. You know, oh, oh boy. 
The voice acting in this is pure cheese. There's obviously a lot of fan service here, some of which is just downright pandering. However, if you think back to the original Castlevania, it had a flavor of B-movie cheese to it, so here we see that celebrated in all its awkward glory. Aside from Maria's breast-obsessed mini-fantasies, things don't get that much worse in the cheese department. The storylines are different for each character, though the main storyline involves a new character named Aeon, confronting each character with cookie-cutter dialogue. Sometimes the answers given make sense, but other times they just roll into non-sequiturs. Please, everyone, give me your strength. Me fight to live. I love Lamp. It's disappointing to see they couldn't give him completely original dialogue to use between each character, as the idea of a single character who controls the timeline of Castlevania characters is a flawed yet interesting idea. The rest of the characters, unless having some kind of attachment to each other, have the same issue. The main antagonist in story mode involves Galamoth, who was the villain in a side story series called Kid Dracula. Though he doesn't actually make an appearance in the game, he sends his Time Reaper back 10,000 years from the future back to Dracula's original era so he can try to wipe him out. Aeon's role in this is to stop Galamoth, the creator of the two evils, by gathering 13 heroes and villains together to help take on the Time Reaper. The story is an interesting take on the franchise, and it's actually quite a refreshing change of pace. So while the character design isn't the greatest, at least the plot tries something new. Judgment has different options of control. On the Wii, you'll want to use either the Classic Controller Pro or the GameCube Controller. So my advice is to grab a Wave Bird and fire it up. If you just have a Wii U, the Classic Controller Pro works just fine, though the button layout can be a bit of a struggle initially. Thankfully, there's a few presets to choose from, so you're bound to find something that you like. While these two types of controllers will make the game more playable, what follows is a gargantuan mess that is at times more flawed than fun. How can you say that? Those are a sacred gift! Castlevania Judgment's problem right away is the camera. Setting the game in an action environment, the camera tries to keep things in a 2D realm while showing off stale, horror-themed locales that don't have any specific game from the franchise in mind. If the camera was pulled back a bit like the Power Stone series, attacks would be less confusing. Either that, or make it completely two-dimensional. Attacks cause serious delays with your characters. While they're pulling off their combos, you may end up pointed the wrong way while finishing your attack, leaving you susceptible to damage. Now granted, since all the characters have the same lack of canceling combos, it balances the game out a bit more, but I can't help but wonder if they had playtested this before settling on this design for the game. Thankfully, using the right analog or the C-Stick allows you to roll away from danger, making it easier to get away from someone who takes advantage of an unstoppable combo. While your main attack button provides a standard combo, using a secondary attack button allows for better, more powerful combos, but pressing that button alone provides no attack. This is off-putting at first, but once you learn how the combo system works, it makes sense. Jump attacks provide slight variation, but honestly it just makes things become more out of focus. One move I like to call the equalizer is your special attack button. By pressing this when your magic bar is full, you can pull off a devastating attack that takes almost half or more of the player's health. This levels the playing field and speeds up matches quite a bit. These attacks are really fun to pull off, and although seeing them over and over again may seem a bit frustrating since they can't be skipped, I personally didn't have too much of an issue with it. You can collect items such as meat for health, hearts for sub-weapons, multipliers for the number of sub-weapons you can use, and of course the sub-weapons themselves. The dagger, holy water, time stop watch, and other items from the Castlevania series make an appearance, along with some new ones. You can grab these out of any barrel or crate laying about, though watch out because many of the levels have fiery lava, poison pits, guillotines, zombies, and more. I like that Konami tried to add a sense of flair to the game by including these traps. Sometimes they can even save you from losing a battle. I knew I should have added more guillotines in the kitchen. Brie is just not enough. That's your kitchen? Aside from story mode, there's an arcade mode, which helps unlock certain gallery items. There's survivor mode, which is just running the gauntlet to see how long you can survive. There's training and tutorial modes to help you learn how to play the game. My favorite additional section in the game, and honestly one of the best parts of this title, is castle mode. Choose a character and enter the castle to face off against various different challenges. Some of them are pretty basic, like 
defeat this character or destroy seven objects. But what really drives up the intensity is the panic of getting back to the safe spot to restore your health. See, you're working with a single life bar that can be refilled either by collecting health in the levels or getting to the safe spot. However, it's always a roll of the dice if you're badly wounded and need to get back to the castle. You may run into a random battle which could ruin your chances at a save. This is extremely challenging and there's a lot of strategy behind when to save and when to continue. If you get too greedy, you might have to start back at the previous save spot. Your reward for going through with different characters is the ability to unlock accessories to add on to their third and fourth costumes. Various hats, fairies, and tails are all available to you upon unlocking them, and each character's unlockables are mostly different, allowing for some incredible replay value. The game also does a fairly decent job in the graphics and audio department. Attacks sound fairly brutal when they connect, and all the sound effects for the specials are loud and booming. This game looks great for a Wii title, which is nice to see a game company not inject a Nintendo 64 graphics into a Wii title just to save on budget. There's some great shadow effects, and everything is extremely well lit in all the spooky, scary right ways. While the art style does kill it a bit for me, it's still pretty to look at. The remix tracks are all done extremely well, with a few new ones ones that continue the Castlevania legacy of amazing Baroque-inspired rock-based songs. Voice acting, aside from being ridiculous, does at least give the option to change to the original Japanese for a different approach. <laughs> Castlevania Judgment is not for everyone. It has major issues with the lack of a cancel attack option, the camera can be nauseating at times, and it's made too many major artistic changes to the characters we all know and love. But aside from that, it still has the heart and soul of a Castlevania game. The project was ambitious, and while a few tweaks would have made this a hell of a lot more playable, I still enjoy it for what it is, a tasteless brawler with its fair share of problems. Oh, and boobs. Will you stop? These things only get in the way. Is that the best you've got? I thought for sure you'd go weak at the knees for a bad Castlevania game. Whoa, whoa, we're not talking about Lords of Shadow here. Even I won't touch that one. I don't blame you. You know, Dracula, you're not such a bad guy after all. Well, that about wraps it up for this Halloween season. As always, stay safe, and remember, you never know when the ghouls are going to come after you. Hmm. Now I want pizza. I wonder if they'll deliver at this hour. Who could that be? Oh! Oh! Whoa! Who are you? Did you just happen to see a guy? Super tall, creepy cape. Wait a minute, are you the delivery guy that he accosted? Are you okay? Do you, do you need some help? For starters, the guy stole my delivery. All right, I guess I can help you there, I guess. Let me see what I got here. Wait a minute. That guy stole my wallet! Dracula! Oh, why does everyone always steal my wallet or my keys or my socks or my shoes? This is getting really frustrating. Die, wallet thief! You don't belong in this world! It was by my hand that I was once again given cash. Whoa. Dracula! <laughs> <laughs>